as you can see, this resulted for me into a 34.75% increase on the account in only five months. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to a brand new video. In this video, we will be back testing my current strategy. Let's get into it. So uh, right in front of me, we have Avex Replay. This is the software that I use to backtest the most on um, because it is based on TradingView. There's a TradingView integration. This is no sponsor, by the way. I just like using them. So basically what I've, what I've been doing lately, I've been returning back to what I was doing in order to get where I got. And that is back to my backtesting. And that is religiously backtesting. And right now I decided for myself to backtest the five paths that I trade. So currently there is GBV JPY, Euro JPY, Euro USD, GBP USD, and AUD USD to backtest all five pairs five years in the past up till now. So basically from 2017 up till 2023. And as you can see right now, I've started with GJ. Euro USD was something that I was showing a student of mine and he asked if we could backtest a certain month that he was backtesting. So don't pay attention to this, but GPJPY is what I started with. And if we go to analytics real quick, these are the analytics that I have currently on the account that is only three months or something wait from january 2017 up till may 2017 so it's five months of data i've taken 45 trades i have a 51 percent win rate so the win rate is not the greatest but i would say it is very good the reason i would say it is very good because i target more than one over two so as you can see my average risk reward is 2.3 and if you take in mind that i win one and two trades i have a 2.3 r risk to rewards this is very good this is very good as you can see this resulted for me into a 34.75 percent increase on the account in only five months this is very good this is very good and this is realistic the thing with epics replay is that you can't fake anything you can't go back in time you can't go cherry pick trades you just play forwards and you play straights and if you miss straights you miss them and if you lose straights you lose them right you can't fake anything so basically what i've been doing and in this video, I will teach you how to backtest basically because I will simply show you every single thing that I do when I'm backtesting. So basically what I do is I have Notion, as you can see right here, Notion, and then I have this backtesting file. This backtesting file contains all of my pairs. And by the way, this is something that will be coming to the Playbook 2.0. So to the Trading Center 2.0, this is something that will be integrated in there. Um, so yeah, this will be very cool. And so then your pairs, then you go to pair one, and then you have all the years that you can backtest, right? 2017, then the first month, then you have week one, all the weekdays that you took a trade on, week two, week three. And this is something that I've created to make the backtesting a lot faster than it was before. Before I was recording every single thing of the backtest results, and basically I noticed that you only need the screenshots. You need the screenshot of a lower time frame and you need the screenshot of a higher time frame. So for example, right here, you have the 15 minutes, bam, and you have the one hour. If I make this full screen, it will be more easy to see. <laughs> so you have the 15 minute and you have the one hour. That's basically everything I need because I will enter on the 15 or on the five sometimes and I will do my analysis on the one hour. So this is more than enough in order to see what I've done wrong or what I've done right. So this is perfect. So basically this is all I need. And there's something, like I said, that will be integrated in the Trading Central 2.0. Then you have your Epics replay. Here are all your stats that you need. And you can basically also see the trades that you took on each and every single day. As you can see, surprisingly, Monday is my best day yet. My experience taught me that Monday was my worst day always, and everyone else on the internet says that Monday is the worst day to trade. But as you can see, right now I'm backtesting in 2017, up till now, it is my best day. This will be very interesting because now when I'm doing this, I will have data of five years for every single pair. That is crazy. The thing is that it costs me around 45 minutes to backtest one month so 45 minutes and a 15 minute break so that's say one hour so it takes me 12 hours to back test a year times five it takes me 60 hours to back test one pair do that times five like what well, it takes me 300 hours to back every single thing but it will be so 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 worth it okay so let's hop into it and let's do this together then it, then i can exactly show you what i'm doing so this is the the epics replay thing let it load yes here it is and this is basically it as you can see, it is just training view. It is just training view. It looks really cool. And Epic Free Pay, if you're seeing this, sponsor me, bro. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, the one hour. So this is a trade that I took. Let's delete that. And first things first, always when I'm on the one hour, I'm going to mark up the one hour and see what I can use of information that the chart gives me, right? 
But before we do that, we go to the daily. And we go to the daily and we see, okay, the daily is very, very bullish. Is there something that could sabotage us right now? There is. There is a, a, high, a prior high from 2016 incoming right here. So basically, whenever we take out this high, it can reverse on us. Whenever we hit this order block, it can reverse on us. So this could be a potential point of sabotage. This is something that I created and this is probably something that someone else also has created because every single thing has been invented already. But a point of sabotage is, is simply a point in the market where price can reverse on you. So this can be order blocks in the other direction. This can be fair value gaps in the other direction. This can be points of liquidity in the other direction. And basically how you want to use this, these point of sabotage is you are going to look out for them and you are going to base your take profits on them. You're going to base your entries on them. So basically right here, you don't want to go long because we can have a potential sabotage right here for our long trade. Let's say, for example, we take a short right here. I'm just saying something. This right here can be a potential point of sabotage for us because this is a fair value gap, all the block. This can be a point where price can potentially reverse. We can't go like, okay, we are targeting this because liquidity is underneath this and I know price is going to go there. No, we, we don't know anything. We don't, we actually don't know anything. So this is basically a point where price can reverse on us because price can easily do this, right? Price can easily do that. So who are we to say, okay, I want to see this and then this happening and then this and this and this. No, price can do this, can do this and then reverse on us. So that is a point of sabotage. And always remember that and always look out for those things. And I think that will already help you um, with your take profits and with your entries. Okay, then we go to the Fora. It basically, it is so super bullish that I'm that I just have to wait for a reversal of some kind. But for now, my bias is of, of course very very bullish. It's noon basically on Tuesday, the 9th of May. So let's go a little bit further because right now I don't have an entry. There is nothing in here for me that says okay, we can take an entry. Maybe this right here. This is a fair value gap right here. Fair value gap on the one hour. It is combined within a one hour order block this from right here so this is a very good point of interest for us to take a long position let's see what happens bam as you can see we enter it right here let's go do the 15 minutes and let's see if we get a strong reaction out of this we do but it is already 8 45 at 8 45 i'm not at the desk anymore and i'm trying to take trades that are realistic and i'm trying to take trades that i can actually take in real life so i won't be touching this let's go to the one hour real quick again so that we can skip through the morning and as you can see it just flew out of the zone and that is that is literally the point what i'm always saying is these higher time frame point of interest are so strong and that is the the risk that i'm seeing and the the mistakes that i'm seeing with ict students don't get me wrong ict is very great ict is very great and the teachings are very great and as you can see i integrate a lot of his teachings in my own trading style but the problem i see is with people that maybe don't understand it fully they will get trapped in these lower time frame zones they will get trapped in the five minutes the four minutes the three minutes the one minute and that is not good and that is why it is important to just zoom out a bit. Go to the higher time frames because these time frames will have so much more probability behind them. And if you use this and if you combine this with the one minute, be my guest, right? Be my guest and just use it to your advantage. But be sure that you're not getting caught up in these lower time frames. So then we are gone out of the zone. Um, we basically missed the trade for now. Let's see if we get an entry somewhere around London Open. So London Open is right here. And as you can see, there is a 15 minute for value gap here and a 15 minute order block right here. So we have this 15 minute order block right here, 15 OB, and we have this 15 fair value gap right here, right? 15 fair value gap. If you go to the one hour, maybe there's also something to see right there. Not, not really, not really. So let's just keep it on the 15. By the way, this is not, this is not, an entry right so you're just waiting whenever you're seeing this you're not doing anything you're waiting i always say structure is the number one thing structure is king and if we are defining structure right here you have your high way up there right you have your low lower high lower low lower high higher low so this is basically what people see as a market structure shift but it is not a market structure shift before a market structure shift can happen you need to have indeed the other direction low, so a higher low in this example, but you also need to have a higher high. 
And in this case, we fail to make a higher high, we keep it at a lower high. So in this case, it is invalid, no market structure shift. Okay, so for now, there is no strong reaction coming out of the zone. Okay, right now, there is something happening from this zone again. And now it is in our session. So let us see. So basically right now, we broke a high. So we went from lower lows and lower highs to higher highs and higher lows. So let us see right now if there is something where we could potentially enter. Um, the thing is, I don't think so. The thing is, I don't think so. Maybe this on the five minutes. This is a five minute fair value gap. As I said, the higher the time frame, the stronger the confluence is. Let's see it on the four hour. Potential point of sabotage. Four hour fair value gap right here. So I'm not entering the trades. And that is the thing with, with, with Epix Replay. If I'm now not entering the trade, I can miss it. I can just miss it. And that is something that I will be recording too. I'll be quoting my losing trades, my winning trades, but also my missing trades. Let's see what happens. Let's go to the 15 for to make it easier. Okay, right now we had a reaction out of this, so uh, it was a good zone. It was a good zone to take a trade from, but this is an even better zone. This is an even better zone. So let's do it like this. Let's take our stops right here and let's just take a one over two because this could be a point of sabotage. So let's just take a one over two like this let's just take a market order because we're already at these prices bam take profit hits um so as you can see what did i do here let's just analyze it real quick this was a very good entry right this was a very good entry it could have been a massive massive trade but i was not sure of it so why would i enter the trade if i'm not sure of it as you can see this one is much 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 stronger and a much stronger reaction than this front right here. So whenever I see this, I have to be entering the trade. I have to enter the trade because it is so much stronger. And as you can see, it was beautiful. Almost no drawdown, beautiful. I put my stop loss right here just to be safe. I target at a one over two because that's all we need, right? And bam, TP hit in an hour, an hour or so. So this was basically a perfect trade. And then what we're doing is right here, you have this, this square. You press split screen and on the left you have your 15 minutes so it's basically the entry time frame the 15 or the 5 whatever you want to use and on the right i want you to select the one hour so that you have a bit of a cleaner look at what the higher time frame was doing and what the higher time frame was presenting for you then you go to this camera icon you take you do save chart image so that you take a screenshot then you go to your notion template we were ended in may and we were at wednesday but basically all you need right wednesday and I like to do it like classifying um, day per day so that you can see which days you are performing quite good on and which days you want it. Okay, so this is a screenshot. As you can see, 15 minutes, very easy trades. Let's try one more. And as you can see, I'm really, really selective with the trades that I'm taking and that is how you should trade, guys. You should be really selective with the trades you're taking because you're putting capital on the risk. So I don't want you to, to just shoot at every single opportunity that you're seeing. Be realistic and act like an adult, I want to say, right? Be realistic with your capital. And as you can see, guys, I'm, I don't know, I'm not making this up, right? As you can see, point of sabotage. We're starting to consolidate. We're starting to consolidate and it starts to retrace. Even though we are going back up from here, why would you want to stress in the hustle of, of going through that, right? Just get in and out of the trade at this point of sabotage, bam, easy like that. So let's go to the next day real quick, bam, right here. Let's see, is there something for us? And let's delete these prior drawings because we don't need them anymore. Is there something for us to enter from? The one hour, there isn't. The 15, we have this fair value gap right here. We could say that it is mitigated from this move right here, but we also have this order block. 15 minute order block, 15 minute order block. Let's see how it is going to react to this. It's reacted like a little bit. If you don't know what displacement looks like, guys, this is what displacement looks like. Not this. Not this. This. This is what displacement looks like. And you have to wait for all these signs to align, right? So you have to wait for your structure to align. You have to wait for your displacement to occur and you have to wait for your point of interest areas to be hit and to see that displacement happening from there. So basically this was a perfect example. Low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Bam, the market structure has shifted. Entry right here, targets on your point of sabotage. That's it. 
it's, it's as easy as that. It's really as easy as that. And this is just giving me a 50% win rate. It's all you need. It's literally all you need. So if we go to the one hour right now, what can we see? As you can see, we created a lower high right here. And now we created a lower low. So basically the one hour structure has shifted. So right now we will be looking for shorts. So we are going to mark up our point of interest for a short position. This is a one hour order block. This is a one hour order block. And I'll always draw the order blocks on from weeks to weeks. If you don't know what an order block is, I have a video about that on my channel. So this is my one hour order block right here. And we have a value gap in between, but I'm, I'm just going to focus on these two because these will be the high probability, I would say. Then let's go to the 15 and just monitor what is going on. Okay, we're going even deeper. Let's maybe do the one hour to make it easier. Okay, we have some consolidation right here. So once we're consolidating, we can see a potential reverse happening. So this is when you want these areas to be targeted. But right now we also have a one hour for value gap right here. Bam, one hour for value gap. So let's see what is going to happen. And right now we can't even trade anymore because it is in the evening. So let's go further and further up to London Open. Zoom in again to have a more clear view. And as you can see right now, we also have here some point of interest areas on the 15 minutes. So this could also be a very good area to take a trade from. But again, I'm, I'm probably not taking it because I want because I want to see these areas being hit. And if you're wondering how many trades I'm taking, I'm taking approximately three to five trades a week. And so that will be like 20 trades a month. But some months we only have one trade a week. As you saw, I took 45 trades in almost five months, right? So yeah, you could say it is approximately about 10 a month. As you can see, we started a new week right here. I could have taken a trade from here, the one that I mentioned to you guys. So it will be like this. Oh, this is the wrong one. It could be like this. Bam, stops here. One over two targets. But as you can see, we wouldn't have hit the target anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I'm still waiting for these areas to be hit 9 a.m. Bam, we have a reaction out of this fair valley gap right here. Let's go to the 15 minutes. And as you can see, we have a strong reaction coming out of the zone. So we're taking our entry right here in the beginning of the fair valley gap. We're putting our stops above these highs. And as you can see, we have a quite of a big stop loss, 30 pips, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really bother me. Right now, point of sabotage right here. But now it is really important to, to keep in mind the bigger picture. If this is the one hour, if we're going bearish on the one hour, and this is just a reversal, what are we targeting? We're targeting these lows. So this will be our target. This is a 3.3 R trade. Is there a point of reversal? Is there a point of sabotage nearby? This order block right here. So I'm probably just targeting this order block. Just go to the 15 minutes. Let's place our orders. I would say this is a lower probability trade as the first one because we also have these two order blocks right here still. But let's see, let's see what happens. We enter a trade. I'm going down, I'm going back up. And this is what I was explaining. This is your point of sabotage. And as you can see, bam, strong reaction out of this. Strong reaction out of this. Ooh, okay, we got stopped out. And right here we got take profit. Oh, what was this, man? Eight o'clock. This might have been pound news. This might have been pound news. Maybe. Hmm. Not particularly. Unfortunate. So this was basically a liquidity grab, a stop hunt. Nothing to do about. It was a really good trade. You could have, we could have re-ended right here, to be honest, but a stop loss would have been huge. It would have been huge. Um, other than that, it was a very, very good trade. And as you can see, we won one of the two trades. And it just takes me a lot of time to do these trades. So that is why we only did two live, basically. But if you want to see more of this, if you want to see more of these trades being backtested, I will actually record a whole year, a whole year of these backtest trades. And I will drop that in the project that I'm making. So this will be something very cool. And I think this will be something very beneficial for you guys to learn from. And um, but basically this is week three, week three. And this was on Monday. We got this loss, stopped out right here for liquidity. Oh, it was actually over the night. It was actually overnight. So Monday to Tuesday, this will be Monday to Tuesday. And this is then something that I, that I can learn from. What did I do wrong? Maybe holding an open overnight, maybe ignoring that point of sabotage from me. I could have prevented this by just targeting that point of sabotage right here and making my stops a lot smaller, right? Maybe zooming in on the five minutes for this example. Yeah, this could, this was a very, this was a lot better trade. If I would have zoomed in on the five minute like this, put my stops right here above these highs, target this, this point of sabotage for me, 
bam this would still be a one over three r trait so this is something that we can learn from and this is something that i can improve on so I'm basically always zooming in on the five minutes, but just for the video, I was keeping on the 15. But yeah, if you take screenshots of this and you pay attention to these mistakes that you're making, you are going to adapt these habits in the live markets. This is a hassle and this is a pain to go through, but it is really neat and this will improve your trading tremendously. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye, guys.